Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way on this channel we talk books and today I am bringing a book haul to you from the month of February. So I've got a stack of 20 books to show you so I'm going to dig straight into it. Dig straight in? I'm going to get straight into it, get straight into it. Um, and I'm going to start with the new books that ha have come into my life uh, this month. And I'm going to then move into the secondhand books and tell you a little bit about the story of the acquisition of the secondhand books. Okay, so uh, let's start with a book that I have actually already read. <laughs> um, and that is this one, Bad Art Mother by Edwina Preston. This is a book that was nominated for the Miles Franklin Award last year. Um, and I read it then uh, when I was reading the books from the prize. Uh, this one I grew on me. So it was one that I had borrowed from the library. It grew on me. I really enjoyed it. And I um, put it onto my wish list and thought, you know, thought to myself, like, I'll get a copy if it comes on sale. It came on sale. I picked it up. So uh, Bad Art Mother, it's amazing. So this is a book about uh, a frustrated poet named Vita Gray. Um, and then she sort of has this deal with a childless couple. She, she has a kid called Owen um, and they want to spend time with Owen, um, which she does. Uh, she allows that to happen so that she can um, have some time to write her poetry. Uh, this is set in the past, so it's sort of, um, I can't quite recall what the, if they ever did say, uh, maybe the 60s, 60s maybe, the early 60s, uh, yeah, I think so. So r roughly around the 50s or 60s, um, and it's set in Australia, uh, and then some stuff goes on. So this was really awesome. I'll link up in the cards to the video where I reviewed it, um, if you want to have a clearer review of the book. All the rest, though, actually, no, I was going to say all the rest I haven't read, but that's not true. Uh, the only other one that I have read, and I just wanted to buy this beautiful edition to have in my collection, uh, is The Little Prince. It's a classic, though. Um, it's a book I've read years and years and years ago. Um, this is just a beautiful cloth-bound edition, um, and it has the sort of regular kind of illustrations on the inside from... Um, you know, the normal edition of The Little Prince, but um, this is just a really beautiful edition. And again, it was on sale, so I decided to pick it up. So those are the two that I have already read out of this collection. Everything else is new to me. Um, so let's have a look at it now. Uh, so <laughs> the next one that I've got is this one. It's a classic uh, called Melina by Ingeborg Bachmann. Uh, this is an Austrian author and my uh, Around the World Book Club, where we're reading books from all of the countries around the world, we're no, nowhere near done. But we're about to do Austria. This was one of the ones that was on the table as an option. It wasn't the one that we ended up voting on, but I decided to buy it anyway um, to read at some point. So probably not in the very near future, but uh, this is from the Penguin Modern Classics editions. And uh, this is a uh, collection that I really like as part of my classics. I've got quite a few of them. So I decided to pick this one up. It was at a reasonable price. Um, and yeah, so I thought I'd give, give it a go at some point. The next one is one that I heard uh, spoken about on the Savage Rage channel. Simon um, uh, had his mum, uh, Louise, who also has a channel, Louise Savage Muses, um, and they were talking about some books, I think, that they had recently hauled. Um, and this was one of the ones that came up. I think it was Louise that was reading um, or had purchased this one. It's called Cecily uh, by Annie Garthwaite. And uh, on the front it says, wife, mother, politician, traitor, fighter, survivor. Uh, 1431 is a dangerous time for a woman to be defiant. England has been fighting France for a hundred years. At home, power-hungry men within a corrupt government manipulate a weak king and name Cecily's husband, York's loyal duke, an enemy. As the king's grasp on sanity weakens, plots to destroy York take root. It will take all of Cecily's courage and cunning to save her family. But when... 
when the will to survive becomes ambition for the crown, will she risk treason to secure it? This is war as women fight it. So it just sounded really um, interesting to me, but also look at this cover. <laughs> it's just beautiful. So anyway, I decided to pick it up. Again, I was able to get it at a, a decent price, so I picked it up. Another book that I heard uh, heard about on a booktube channel, this time it was um, Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot when he was talking about books that were due to be released this year in 2024. He mentioned this one and I screenshotted it because I was interested in um, looking into it and I was able to find it at a decent price so I picked it up. It's called Hard by a Great Forest by Leo Vardiashvili. Uh, Variashvili, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's how you say it. Um, and this one is set in the country of Georgia. So it's uh, it says Saba's father is missing, and the trail leads back to uh, to Georgia. It's been two decades since Iraqli fed fl fed words brave fled his war torn homeland with two young sons, now grown men. Two decades since he saw their mother, who stayed so they could escape. At long last, he, uh, there's a name of a town here, and I don't know how to say, how to say it. Belisi, T-B-I-L-I-S-I. -I. I'm going to say Belisi. Belisi has lured him home, but when Iraqli's phone, uh, phone calls stop. A mystery begins. Arriving in the city as escaped zoo animals prowl the streets, Saba picks up the trail of clues. Strange graffiti, bewildering messages transmitted through the radio, pages from his father's unpublished manuscript scattered like, scattered like breadcrumbs. All roads, it seems, lead back to the past and to secrets swallowed up by the great forests of Georgia. Hard by a Great Forest is a rare searching tale of home, memory, and sacrifice, of one's family, one family's mission to rescue one another and put the past to rest. So it just sounded really good. This is actually my first purchase of a book published in 2024. Um, so, yeah, this could be a contender for uh, the prompt in my reading challenge, which is linked down in the description below and it's linked in all of my videos uh, in the description. Um, that is all about picking up a book that is like brand new. Um, so yeah, exciting. I'm excited to get to that one. Another book, uh, this time a recommendation by Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, uh, is this one, Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamard. Uh, when he was speaking about this, this is all about a, a, a woman who lives in America, I think, um, and she, but she's a Palestinian and she goes back to Palestine to, um, uh, for a visit. And while she's there, she, she's a, um, an actor, I think. And she is drawn into, um, this production of, um, Shakespeare, of a Shakespeare play, uh, that's sort of recontextualized in Palestine. So it just sounded really fascinating to me and the way that Scott talked about it, he was really, really into it, um, really enjoyed the book. So I'm excited to get to this one at some point. Again, I popped it onto my um, my wish list. It came on at a good price, so I picked it up. So excited for Enter Ghost. And another one that's been on my wish list for a while, but I was prompted to pick it up when it was long listed for the Women's Prize for Nonfiction this year is this one, The Dictionary People, The Unsung Heroes Who Created the Oxford English Dictionary by Sarah Ogilvie. Um, this one I just was in, I, when I heard about it initially, was just super interested in the, um, the premise of the book. I have read and loved books about dictionaries, about words, um, so this seemed right up my alley, so I was excited to pick it up. Um, so yeah, excited for this one at some point, hopefully soon now that it's been nominated uh, for the prize. Um, I'm not going to read all of the books. The only one I've already read is Wifedom, um, which I thought was amazing. So hopefully there'll be some other gems on that long list as well that I'm also going to really, really love. Okay, so we're in the nonfiction now and we're about to head into the purchases that from the second hand. So the exciting thing is that these second hand books come from two locations. Three of them I picked up at a um, just a random uh, second hand shop that I dropped into um, and just sort of had a 
flick through their collection. Normal secondhand book shopping behaviour. Um, the second set of them, which is the majority, everything else, uh, came from uh, the Lifeline book sale. They do a big kind of inner hall event um, that goes over a couple of days and there's like tables with boxes and boxes of books, heaps and heaps of things to look through. Um, and my husband and I really enjoy going to those. So that's what we did with this, um, this lot. So most of the books you're going to see now came from that except for three. So really, really, um, exciting to go to and rifle through the boxes and find awesome things. Um, so First of all, I'm going to tell you about the non-fiction book that I picked up at that random um, shop, secondhand bookshop, uh, and that is Bedtime Story by Chloe Hooper. I've had my eye on this one for a little while, so when I found it, I was happy to pick it up for $5. Um, this is actually a memoir, uh, and it's about grief and the power of stories to... Um, uh, to sort of talk to children about um, really sad life events that are happening. So the prompt for it uh, was that her, the author's husband or partner, sorry, um, was diagnosed with um, a rare and aggressive illness and she was looking for a way to tell her young children um, what was going on. And she is kind of exploring how fairy tales and other sorts of stories um, on the on a children's bookshelf might be able to kind of um, help with explaining what's going on and also kind of dealing with the emotions and the, the grief that happen in those circumstances. So I've had my eye on this for some time and I'm really excited to now have a copy of it um, so that I can dip into it at some point and hear about the sort of transformative power of story um, in situations of grief. So very excited about that one. Um, I'm going to go through these a little bit quicker because I've got seven minutes left of uh, recording time on my camera. So let's see if we can do this super quick okay a couple of art books to start with this one is a uh, called I walk the line new Australian drawing and it was put out by the MCA the Museum of Contemporary Art here in Sydney um, this is a, a book that went along with an exhibition which I didn't see it was from 2009 um, but the reason I picked it up is because it has these amazing um, images of drawings that um, and that were included in the exhibition, I presume, um, from lots of different Australian artists. So I'm just excited to flick through that one and get to know some artists that I haven't previously necessarily known. Um, another book that I picked up is this one. It's not in the best condition, um, but it just sounded really intriguing to me. It's called... Uh, a, the Journal of a Colonial Lady, and that colonial lady is called Jessie Augusta Francis, um, and there's a photograph of her uh, taken on the 16th of October 1840. So she was a person who I believe lived in, um, I'm going to say Sydney. I want to say she was in Sydney. Um, anyway, in Australia uh, in that period, and she kept a journal. Um, which is interesting in and of itself. However, what they've done in this book is they've also paired it with artworks from the time, um, including this one, which is one of my favourites that's at the Art Gallery of New South Wales, uh, called Waiting by Gordon Coots. Um, and it just sort of pairs the her text with these artworks that are sort of showing colonial times life. Um, so I thought it would be an interesting book to flick through. Um, another book that I picked up, and this was sort of on a whim, I, it was on a table as I was walking out towards the place where you pay, um, is this one. So I don't really know that much about it. It's called How to Suppress Women's Writing by Joanna Russ. Um, this was initially published in the 80s, and this is a reprint with a new forward um, by Jessica Crispin. And uh, it is basically just sort of about the ways that um, women's writing is suppressed, essentially, um, and sort of looking at exploring that topic and kind of thinking about, I guess, um, you know, you, you can't really fight something if you don't really, if you can't identify it and know exactly what it is. So it's kind of identifying so that you can then fight it. I don't think it's a how-to manual, essentially, um, for people looking to suppress women's writing. Anyway. 
you get the idea. <laughs> the next one is this one um, called Women Artists in the 20th and 21st Century, edited by Uta Grosenik. Um, this is essentially just a little um, pretty random uh, collection of artists, female artists, um, and it sort of has, has this little kind of photo and little um, biography of the artist um, with sort of text here about their artworks and then it also has um, images of their artworks. Uh, when I looked at the list of who is included, there are some familiar names in there. Obviously, there's a Frida Kahlo page, uh, Marina Abramovich, um, Louise Bourgeois, uh, Tracy Emin, uh, Hannah Hock. They're all names that I know, um, but there's heaps in here that I don't know. So I thought it would be really helpful for me to sort of get to know a few other artists um, and to kind of get to know their work to know if it's for me. So um, I'm excited to kind of flick through this one and learn about some more artists. In a similar way, um, this is the last of the non-fiction. This one is Wild Women, History's Female Rebels, Radicals and Revolutionaries by Pamela Robson. This again is also um, just sort of little biographies of these uh, women who lived at different periods of time. It sort of, again, has a chapter on each one um, and tells all about uh, the woman. And it's sort of women who kind of broke stereotypes and, you know, changed our perception about things. So, yeah, excited, excited to read that one. All right, we've got to go quickly. Only three more minutes left. <laughs> okay, can we make it? Let's try. All right, a couple of classics. We've got uh, The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton in the penguin classics um edition another penguin classics uh the song of roland uh translated by dorothy l sayers so um again just excited to add these to my collection this is a, uh not from a series that i have uh any others of but i'm just interested in it it's uh notes from underground by theodore dostoevsky uh tr new translation by richard pevier and Larissa Volokonsky. Um, so, yep, excited to add those classics to my collection. A couple of kids' books as well. Um, this one is called A Most Magical Girl by Karen Foxley. Um, this I read the introduction of, like the first kind of chapter of, and was super intrigued. We have a copy of this at my school library where I work. Um, I read that little bit and I was like, oh, I need to read this book. This sounds amazing had to return it because kids wanted to borrow it. So I found this copy. I thought I'd pick it up. I'm very excited to have that in my collection. Another one, uh, this is a verse novel called Bindi by Kirli Saunders, who is an Aboriginal author. Um, so yeah, excited to have this one in my collection. I really do like a verse novel for kids. I think they're a really awesome format. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to read this one. Two more books very quickly. Uh, the Promise by Damon Galgut. This one won the Booker Prize in 2021. And another classic is this one, Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. Super excited to have these two books in my collection along with all of the others. So wrapping up super quickly with one minute to spare. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, hearing about all of the books that I picked up and I am looking forward to getting into these books and reading through them. Let me know if you've read any of these and you think I should prioritize them on my TBR. Um, down in the comments, would love to chat to you about that. Or just tell me about books that you've been bringing into your collection as well uh, in the month of February. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.